Hello, good morning, good morning, uh, good evening, good afternoon. I am just going to share this to the other pages. Give me a moment. Hello, hello, am I on Memories Paper Art? That's all I want to really make sure right now. So if somebody could tell me that I'm sharing in that group, that would be great. Good morning, Paul, good morning, Min. Who else is there? Hi, Tara. Um, can somebody, Paul, am I in Memories Paper Art Group? I'm on. I just need to know, Gail, if I'm on in Memories Paper Art and not my own. No, you're with me on Paper Angel. I'm not Paper Angel, but I'll be an angel. Okay, Paul. Great. That means I'm there with um, Tamara. Okay, great. So this is done through the Memories Paper Art Group. However, um, I have to do it through mine because the Classic View is not allowing me to connect through Tamara's group. Hi, Dali. Hi, Jill. You know what? I'm not going to ignore the angel because I am an angel. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with that. Oh, thanks, Gail. So either way, you're all watching. Well, good morning. This is my first time on this Facebook group, a fantastic Facebook group, and an even more fantastic lady, Tamara Morton. Thank you for having me this morning. I'm looking forward to being with all of you this morning. Thank you, Gloria. Hopefully people will start slowly joining on here. Um, I was just actually speaking with Tamara this morning we are still working out the logistics on this. However, what I can tell you is that I am going to be doing an... Hi, Tamara. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Um, I was speaking with Tamara this morning quickly, briefly, and just letting her know um, if it was okay to do a sneak peek of... A workshop that we have in the works it will be two online workshops basically get one and then you get the other one too and they'll be done over um, two sessions and we're gonna work on the dates and um, they're gonna be done through Tamara's group so they're exclusive to Tamara these classes were just recently taught um, not even a month ago so they're brand new but we wanted to be able to reach um, people that aren't here in Canada and would be able to do these workshops. Like I said, we're working out the logistics, but all the embellishment kits, all the products are available through Dali Art Market in the UK and of course through my website, Pip Art Creations. But today is not really about these, but I wanted to give you a sneak uh, preview. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Lynette. Hi, Debbie. Um, but I'll show you quickly. These will be the online workshops that will be coming very, very soon in early December. So this one is called The Magical Seahorse and it's done with Stamperia molds and it's also done with all Pentart Yummy products. So this will be the Seahorse workshop. It's done on a wooden plank. And the second one... Um, I've had so much fun with it and I keep lighting this, so I've run out my battery, but Tamara will post all the details. This is quite big and this workshop um, is also 
using, believe it or not, the same products. So this is why um, we're doing the two workshops together, simply because what we want to do, thank you, Lynette, simply because you get to use the same products. So you're not doubling up if you need to purchase them. So like I said, this does light up. I just, um, I like to keep this on and then it gets used in the workshops where it comes on. So it's kind of, um, I need to put a new battery in there. But there you go, this is actually 12 inches and it's done in a reverse canvas, Stamperia and again, um, all Pentart products. So please um, know that these will be posted soon, as soon as tomorrow I dally, we all uh, get the logistics ready. But just wanted to show those um, to you today that I'll be doing these live workshops with you guys through tomorrow. Now, on to today's project. Thank you all for coming and joining. Uh, thank you, Sue. Thank you. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Lynn. And I'm sorry if I miss anybody um, here, but I will try to keep an eye on the comments. So today we are going to be making this gorgeous, gorgeous bottle. Thank you, Sue. Um, this gorgeous bottle has got a lot of detail that you probably can't quite see. For instance, it's got a 3D eye on it and it's got a lot of the contour liner and it goes all the way around where i've used the contour liners to do the windows and the snow icicles and of course a little chickadee now we're going to be making this today however i wanted to show you that this technique is very versatile with all kinds of rice papers so I'm going to go through the rice papers with you and just let you know. I just made this one the other day. Um, hi, Nikki. Simply because somebody um, had asked me that their home decor was red and if I could do one in red. But also because I just wanted to have a little bit of practice before I came on the live. So again, this is rice paper. And I'm not sure if you can see all the little details with the contour pen there. And you can see them on the trees there. You can see the shine there. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Shirley. And you can see the 3D red pen there. So I work a lot with the contour liners and the 3D red pen. So I mentioned this yesterday when I did my other Facebook Live on my page. Um, usually sometimes what people will do they'll actually won't use an empty bottle thank you nikki they won't use an empty bottle what will hi gwyneth what they'll do is keep a full bottle but my um tip to you would be just write down if you have red wine or white wine in the bottle but then i came up with a good solution use a red point setter for your full red wine bottles hi jill and the white point set of rice paper for your white wine bottles. So if you're wondering about the paper that I've used, the first one is Stamperia, the one we're gonna be working with today is DFS173S. So this is what it looks like. Hi Tamara's mom. So this is what it looks like, okay? So that's what we're using today. It's a gorgeous large paper. And the one that I used for my red poinsettia bottle was this one. And this one is Stamperia DFSA3072. Hi, Cheryl. And the other one that I'm talking about where if you want to not do red wine, maybe is not that it matters. You can do empty bottles like I've done is the white poinsettia paper, which is DFSA 3070. There you go. My triple is gin. <laughs> another girl after my heart okay so now let's talk a little bit about the products that we used in order to make this look like there is no distinction between the paint and the actual rice paper okay so as I mentioned yesterday the rice paper actually starts about here 
and it ends about there. So the rest is all blending. They do look delicious, Cheryl, thank you. Um, so it ends about there. So we're gonna really learn today just how to blend. And this is a very, very simple, simple bottle. There's some gorgeous bottles out there that I've seen that people are doing, but this is just a simple one today, okay? Now, some of the other products that we're going to be using are, of course, my love for Pentart. Um, Pentart Primer Paste Gesso. We will be using Acrylic Paint Matte by Pentart Sun Yellow. Then we have the Pentart Matte White. Then we have the Pentart, my favorite color, Pentart Acrylic Matte Indigo. Thank you, Julia. It is absolutely lovely, isn't it? Then we have the Light Blue Creamy Acrylic by Pentart. And then we have the Creamy Acrylic Matte Dark Blue by Pentart. And if you're wondering why I have some semi-acrylic and some mattes, I, oh, I don't have a semi-acrylic, I thought I did, but you can mix and match. It's not gonna matter in the big picture. Now, the other thing that we're gonna be using is the Pentart Decoupage Varnish and Glue for our rice paper. Hi, Miraj. Hi, Julie. Uh, we're gonna be using the Pentart 3D Decor Pen for the chickadee's eye. And I might use a snow um, crystal pen to give it some detail. I haven't thought about it yet. And I love working with these. These are the Pentar contour liners. I have sparkling gold today. I have silver. And this wasn't on the list, but I might add in the steel blue because it lends itself really well to that indigo blue. Okay. So I thought about this workshop. Um, I do a lot of Facebook lives on my own um, Facebook page, but um, I thought about how I was gonna do it here. Usually for my own, what I do is I do a lot of prep work ahead of time. However, this time I'm gonna take you through the exact steps that I do. I didn't do any prep work, so you're gonna have to bear with me as I talk through how we're gonna do this. Hi Elizabeth. So first of all, you need a full bottle or an empty bottle. In my case, mine is empty. I just drank it. I just drank it all this morning, all of it. No, so this is a bottle here and um, it can be full or it, like I said, just remember what's in it. Now, the first thing that you want to do is just give your bottle a quick rinse. That is a prep work I did. The only prep work I did was to give this a rinse. So you wanna give this a rinse. Now, what I do is I don't use my lid. I actually um, just come in and then I use an X-Acto knife and I just slice off the thing. Now be careful, because you don't wanna um, cut yourself with this. Sorry about the noise. I have a metal desk, so that doesn't help. And there you go, so that's easy, right? Step one. Does it have to be a clear bottle? No, it doesn't have to be a clear bottle at all. If you were going to be putting lights into the bottle uh, to have the bottle light up, then yes, you would want a, um, You could. I could have shared it, right, Karen? All the way from Canada. Um, so Gail, no, it doesn't have to be a clear bottle because we're not putting lights in this. We're not worried about any lights showing through, so it can be a dark bottle also. And we're gonna cover it with white primer. With the clear bottle, it's just easier. With the white primer, you just need a coat or two. With the dark bottle, you might need a little bit more. But by all means, use a dark one if that's what you have. So the next step, for me, the easiest way, um, yes, exactly right, Dali. If you've primed it, it will be fine. The next step that I'm gonna show you is the best way I've learned to take off labels, and you probably all know how to do this. And it's basically to bring in your heat gun. So give me a moment, a talk amongst yourselves if you can, <laughs> and I will take off my labels, okay?
that looks a lot harder than it actually is the only reason it looks so hard is because i'm having to keep the bottle under um <laughs> under the camera where normally i would just pick it up and do this and have my heat gun kind of come off the side but i wanted to get it into um, the camera now if you have any residue left over um just use some um rubbing alcohol that's what we call it here in canada rubbing alcohol can't remember what we called it in England um, and you can just come and clean off your bottle okay if there's any residue left on it usually there's no residue um, if you take your time you can also come in with your exacto knife and take off any excess residue Be careful my bottle doesn't roll off away from me now if you have a little bit of residue left on it don't worry too much we are going to cover it but i know everybody that knows me i like to make sure things are nice and clean so just take your time Yes, and do woodwork, Gail. Yes, and do woodwork too. Um, I'm just so used to doing it this way, but yes. I'm not sure if you get undo in the UK. It basically what it does, it uh, removes when you work with scrapbooking or papers and things like that. Okay, so that is good enough. Um, just a little bit more here. And if my bottle would stop rolling around, it would be great. That's usually what I'm like after I've drank the bottle rolling around. Dali can attest to that. Okay, so there we go. We have a nice, pretty much clean bottle that's no longer stickier. Now, the next step that you're going to do is easy peasy. We're going to bring in our pen tart primer. I bet stick away Lindsay is the same as our um, undo. Now, when you're doing this, uh, surgical spirit rubbing alcohol. Yes, Gwyneth, that's right. You just fell asleep. I just thought, yeah, you fall asleep when you have a drink. <laughs> it's so hilarious. Um, for me, the way I do this is I will usually start off at the top so that then I can hold the bottle this way and do the rest without having to dry it. But we'll see how that works. So you just want to come in and this isn't about being tidy. This is just about getting your bottle covered. And one of the reasons I'm going through all these steps and doing it with you because there's people that have brought the kit or the rice paper and products and they're following along, so I don't want to rush them either. Although I do tend to work a little bit too fast sometimes for my own good. So whoever is following along, just cover your bottle. And I'll tell you in a moment why it's important to cover your bottle. And I would probably do two coats on this. I'm going quite in quite fast and thin. And I'd rather go in fast and thin the first time around. Um, because for me, when I go in a second time uh, with another thin coat, I can grab any areas that have been missed. And also it allows the first one to dry really fast. As we all know, Pentop products um, of mixed media products and have the ability to dry very fast. So I know this is a boring part. You can all relax. It is evening in the UK, so you guys should have your gin and tonics and wine bottles. You should be drinking them right now to empty them. But don't do your project after that. So there you have it. And... Um, this should be dry by now. It's just that I'm going quite fast. 
Hi Maxine. I never thought of a Brillo pad. So now it's really easy to just hold the bottle at the bottom and we can go down here. So the Pentart decoupage matte medium that I'm going to be using is for projects such as canvases, card making, um, anything that is wooden, canvas like paper. There is three decoupage uh, mediums. One is for textile, so for your clothes, so you can put them in the washing machine after you put rice paper on them. And one is specifically for glass. Um, so I could have gone on this directly with the ceramic uh, decoupage medium if I really wanted to. And that then would have allowed me to put lights in this that would have shone through, uh, like the wine cork lights. However, um, I'm putting the white on because I'm not, one, I'm not putting no lights in here. And the other reason I'm using this decoupage matte medium is because it's not glass no more per se once I've got the primer on. Hope that made sense. I'm just gonna give this a quick dry. I've also covered the bottom. Candy cane gin, hmm. Oh, sounds a bit too decadent for me. Sounds really sweet. So there you go. The second layer is all you're gonna need. You can see the difference already. So we'll just continue with that. Again, when you're doing this at home, um, if you're gonna do this later, take your time. Um, there's no need to rush. Let me know if I'm going too fast, if there's anybody trying to keep up. So as long as you get good coverage, um, that's all you need. Nobody's gonna see the bottom of this when it's all said and done, okay? Because the rice paper will be covering it. Okay, I'm just gonna come in and dry that little bit at the top. Okay, flip it around. It's still a little bit wet here, but um, let's just go for it. As you can see, it's not like I'm taking a lot of time to do this. We're just looking for some coverage here. Um, so that the rice paper pops. Again, if you want to put lights in this, then you can just go straight ahead with the rice paper and use a ceramic decoupage. Okay, whoops. 
Let's give that a quick dry. So the primer will also allow um, the blending of the paints to um, mesh well with it too. So I would give it a, I mean, double check when you're doing it and just make sure you got the proper coverage. Like I said, I'm just doing this relatively fast. Now, the next step that you want to do is grab your rice paper. And I will tell you why uh, the difference it makes when you do it on white opposed to when you don't do anything white so I'll give you an example here when you look at it like this the bottle will pop right but when you do it on the brown it's very very dark so you can tell where it pops right here but it, the roof line stays very dark there so you always want a white background in order for your rice paper to pop so very dull there but as soon as you do something white behind it like this it all of a sudden do you see the difference how much that pops how much white you see there so that's with white behind it this is with just a light craft brown behind it so just imagine if it was a black bottle that's why you want to come in with the primer. Okay, that's my tip of the day when working with rice paper. So the next thing you want to see is how do you want to place your rice paper on your bottle? And for me, I've because I've already made this, I kind of know where I want it to go. But what I usually do is I get the length of my rice paper, how I kind of basically want this to be. So rice paper is very forgiving. You can pretty much scrunch it, well, don't scrunch it up, but you can put folds in it and the folds will come out as soon as you start decoupaging. And then I want to fold it at the top. And what I'm trying to do is just kind of um, line up at the top and bottom where I want this. I'm just gonna come down a little bit more. So I'm thinking, right about here okay and then i'm gonna continue to wrap it around and now look you could do the houses you don't need the bird in it i just like the bird and then what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna seam it right off right there where the writing stamp period comes in because i don't want that showing so that's your next step you want to line up your rice paper where you would um it is such a lovely paper mobina thank you uh where you want this you don't want to overlap um if you don't want the birdie or you're using the point set of rice paper then then try a different area you know you don't have to um come off the end you can do it from the middle too it all depends on what you want but for me, when I had originally done this workshop um, here, I for me, it was important to get the bird and a house. So the next step that you're going to do once you've measured it out, albeit mine's not measured properly, um, is you want to start tearing your paper. You do not want to cut your paper. Rice paper is very, very fibrous. In fact, you might be able to see the fibers in it. I don't know. The um, you can definitely see them on the back. Those are all those white things are all fibers. If you cut this, what will happen is it's going to be very difficult to blend it with the paints on your bottle. 
you could definitely definitely get two bottles out of this paper two matching bottles his and hers um you won't be able to blend it very well because you'll see that dead straight line what you want to do is have a tear in it so you can't tell the difference of where it starts and where it ends okay so the best way to do that is to take some water on a brush and then you're just gonna do it down here like this okay and then what you can do when that's saturated then you can start tearing like this and that will give you a nice torn look that will allow you then to do better blending okay I'm just going to double check of where this paper needs to end. So if I start here and I want that, no, nope, I've started on the wrong end. See, look at that. Not paying attention to my own self. So if I start here, then I know I need to end about here. And don't worry about the overlapping um, because that will get covered. So I'm just going to first actually, if by any chance, and it might happen to me today, if by any chance you did not leave enough room for the overlap, I'm cutting it close, don't worry. You can put down um, an extra piece from here. You won't be able to tell because like I said, it is so seamless, it's very hard to tell uh, where you've joined the two pages together, the two pieces when you roll it around. So see how that tears really nicely? So yes, you can definitely, you would be able to get a second bottle out of this paper. Good job, Dali. Yes, definitely. Oh, look at that. That would be a pretty bottle too. There you go. Good thinking there, Batman. And then what I'm going to do off this side, I'm still going to do that tear because I don't want that in there. I still want a dead, not a dead straight line. I need this kind of line. A jaggedy line, if you will. So this one I'm taking pretty close because it's close to my birdie. And you guys are going to laugh. I don't throw away any of my scraps. You see these little scraps I'm pulling off? I'll find a project to use them in. Okay. Now all we have left is the pieces down here, which I better straighten up. Otherwise, I'm going to have a jaggedy bottom. Okay. Let's just double check that that's still working. It's a little bit long for me. I think I said that the first time too. So I'm just going to bring it down one notch. Mm, still a little bit long. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. There we go. I'm happy with it now. Doesn't take much. So again, just do your line here, another line right there, and maybe if I put this down, you can see it better, and then we can just, again, um, tear off the top and the bottom. And it's so easy, it's so easy to tear once you've got the water down on it. You see, look at this piece, you could use that for card making or something. And then let's do the other side. Okay. And then you can use this if for some reason, like I said, you didn't put enough paper down. So let's see what happens. Maybe I have enough paper there. Maybe I don't. Next thing that you're going to do is is that you are going to come in and decoupage oh no you're not no you're not hold your horses don't decoupage 
I forgot my next step. You're going to bring out your yellow acrylic. I bet you guys were all wondering what this was for, right? You're going to bring out your yellow acrylic and your white acrylic. And what you're going to do, let me grab a little baby brush. I'm going to find a little brush here. This is my little brush holder here. Dolly, I got you one. I'm just going to find some little brushes here. And... Um, we're just going to use those to do a little bit of touch up, a little bit of painting. Okay. So what we're basically going to do here now is we're going to do some highlighting. Do you see where the yellow bird is? Hi, Jenny. Do you see where the yellow bird is? We're going to make the bird brighter and we're going to make this roof line brighter. And maybe even some of... Um, the snow in the trees so what you want to do let's just see where it's easier to see it come in with your white and let's get some of that roof line painted and I will show you the difference it will make so you're just gonna come in you don't have to be um, particular about this What this will do, it will just highlight the white of the paper even more. So I'll show you right there. You can see where I've done the paint, how much whiter that is right now. Okay. So that's all we're doing. We're just highlighting some areas in the rice paper. In this case, we're highlighting the roof line. I'll show you now how much that stands out even more. Okay. So we're just going to do it down the icicles here a little bit. And let's just come around the side of where the actual roof line continues. Just a little bit over where that snow is. Okay. Now I see a little bit of uh, white areas here, uh, down the tree. I'm not going to give them all full coverage because I want to have two tones to this snow here. Uh, I want to keep some of the little blue that we have under there alive also. But you kind of get the idea what I'm doing here. I'm just doing some highlights on some of the tree branches here. Okay, so with that done, you can then um, also take a little bit of white and on the birdie, he has just a little bit of white right under here. So just come in and do that white so that stands out. And then he also has some white on uh, his wing here. So we're just going to give him a little bit of white right there. It could be a her for all I know. Okay. So now we have some highlights. And this is where the yellow comes in. Because I'm sure everybody was wondering what am I doing with the yellow. Oh, thank you. It really does make it stand out. And then with the yellow, what we're going to do. He's got his little wing on this side is yellow right here. So we're just going to come in and do that. And then he is also yellow around this area. You know, see how much more he stands out, how much brighter he is. 
lock braider. Oh, you're gonna have so much fun when you do this, Lynette. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, so that's it. That's all you needed the sun yellow for. And let's give this a quick dry. And you can do this on any rice paper. You could, um, when I did the red poinsettia, if you want these to be even brighter or the green leaves to be brighter, all you need to do is just bring in the same color from behind and they will really pop. However, I didn't do it on these because I found these were very, very beautifully detailed and I liked the color when I put it down on the white. Okay, so now let's start with putting this paper down. Now, for me, when I do this, um, the decoupage matte medium goes on the bottom and the top. And, oh, Karen, you have to show us. I just like to start like this. Um, the decoupage, sorry, goes on the top and bottom. That way it's protected on both um, ends. This is a glue also, it's also a varnish. This is uh, the Pentart decoupage matte medium. And as a varnish, it will protect everything. As a glue, it will allow the rice paper to go down. And um, it's matte. And this bottle is very matte. And then what I do, I just continue going around. So I always get my bottom done first. And one of the reasons is I find it easier to keep the wrinkles out. The other reason I like doing this because when you come in, um, ooh, we're just gonna make it. See a little bit of that stamp area, but that's okay. We can cover that, perfect. Um, the other reason I like doing it is, is because when you come in on the top afterwards, while it's already glued kinda at the bottom, it's tacky. It allows you to massage out any bubbles or wrinkles you have. You don't need a lot of this, so just keep going and rolling. I'm rolling from this side now because this is the side that I want the flap to go on. And I'm going to let you know right now, blending takes time if you will um, sometimes I find it's easier to walk away let it dry and then come back and blend but I will do my best to have a fully blended bottle for you already putting it out there because I know I'm getting to the blending part now so I might just be a little bit shy of my paper because I wasn't paying attention. Um, but that's where the extra pieces can come in and you can do a jigsaw job on it. But I'm not going to worry because it's not too bad. So if any of you, anybody needs these products in Europe or UK, you can get them at Dali Art Market. And of course, here in Canada or North America, um, you can get them at Pip Art Creations. And again, I just want to say thank you to Tamara for uh, letting me come and play. I love doing Facebook Lives, albeit sometimes I get nervous, but Tamara tells me I'd be just fine. Okay, oh yeah, we managed to cover it. Look at that, perfect, mundo perfecto. Okay, so now what you want to do is you just want to come over the top. Again, this will seal it and it will protect it. And now if you've got any bubbles or any um, wrinkles, this is where you could massage it out. Now, I don't really see any. It's not because I'm good. It's just easy to put it over a bottle because you're constantly rolling it. But regardless, um, I have a habit or I've made myself aware to just massage it regardless. Um, because if I do this every time, then I'll never forget to do that.
Gwyneth, are you over across the pond where I am? We're in the beautiful Okanagan. It's really a resort town, to be honest. I don't know if it is anymore. See the chickadee? How bright is the chickadee now? See how bright he is? Because we put that paint under it. Thanks, Gail. Because we put that um, paint under it. I don't know if I already went over this already. Okay, so we're just gonna give this a nice quick massage. Again, this dries really, really quick. And we can move on to our next step. And this is drying as I'm doing this, so I probably don't even need to dry this, to be honest. Okay, so now with that done, I'm just going to wipe my hands here. Um, we are ready now to start with um, the blending on this. I'll take that extra piece off there. So, so far, uh, you need to show your view out your window, Pip. I know, right? Jolly, Jolly and my other sister actually picked this home, so we have, uh, have to give them credit. There you go. So this is where we're at right now. Doesn't look like much, but we're going to make this all one piece. I am going to give it a quick blast, though, because otherwise it will be sticky to my hands. can't go wrong with the pent up products like i said earlier they dry so fast okay now the fun part starts i don't know don't know if it's that much fun but it is fun so indigo blue uh creamy acrylic matte light blue creamy acrylic dark blue and white okay Oh, thanks, girl. I know, right? We wanted to do an open house when Dali was here, but then COVID happened. We moved in on the 29th, and then um, everything just kind of went out the window, literally. Da-da! See how fast I am? I had these already pre-mixed. I've got too many paints here, by the way. Too much paint. Okay, now, I don't like to brush this on. Um, because what I want to do is create this bumpy, almost kind of texture. So I like to take a sponge to it. Uh, the texture really lends itself well to um, making sure you can't really tell where the rice paper meets the paint, okay? Okay, yay, Debbie Quinnell. I lived in Quinnell for 10 years. Oh, good, out in the boonies. <laughs> Um, so I just use you I just use these or I mean any kitchen sponge will do is not a big deal and I not been to Norfolk but I was born and raised in the UK and lived in Coventry till I was about 19 and then they shipped me off to Canada uh, <laughs> so um, Spalding UK so for me, how I do this is I take my darkest paint first and that's the one I work with. Don't ask me why, it's just what I do. And look how gorgeous um, this midnight blue is. Look at that. It's just so nice. I don't know if you can see it with the lights. But see how it lends itself really well to this colour here. And I've got way too much in my little 
um, tray there. So this is how I start. This is blending is so much fun. But like I said, if you have to come back to it, um, let it dry, come back to it, play with it, do what you will. If you need to get a brush to get into the nooks and crannies, um, by all means do that. However, make sure you come in with the sponge to get rid of your um, brush strokes. Okay, now we're going to come under the underside. Just like that. I hope everybody can see what I'm doing. And with the midnight blue on the top, when that dries a little bit, I like to come in a second time because I just love the depth of that blue um, when it's dry. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit, but what we're going to do we are going to take a brush i'm looking for a brush 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 uh, this one will do and what we're going to do is we're just going to come in and paint the inside of the bottle blue so it's not standing out with that white okay so just come in and paint the bottle blue on the inside and just go over the top a little bit okay so now it doesn't look funny in your bottle right at the top. You can go in there as far down as you want. Um, that's entirely up to you. Okay, so now while that bit there is drying, I'm gonna still come down a little bit more. Now don't be afraid if you get too much dark color on this because these acrylic paints are so forgiving that I could come in and get full coverage with the white if I had to. That's all you're doing. Dali, you following along, right? Dali really wanted to know how I do my blending. She's going to be like, is that it? Is that easy? There's no magic to blending. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's all in the brush, in the sponge. Okay, now what I'm going to do, while I've still got blue on here, my bottom is going to all be dark. So we're just going to come in and we're going to make this dark. And the reason I put my paints into a plate is because it's, it's easier to get this sponge into, on, into my plate than it is into um, the pot of paint. <laughs> and of course with the squeeze tubes you can't even put it in there. So don't worry about how to, if you come too high or is mismatching. Um, this is just about getting the dark coverage down. And like I said, um, I tend to work from dark to light um, a lot in my projects. Um, I don't know if it's the right way, the wrong way. I don't think there is a right or wrong way. Um, or maybe my projects are just called to work from dark to light. Okay, so now we've got this going. I'm very happy with this and we're done. I'm just kidding. So let's now move on to our next color, which is the dark blue. And while that's still wet, we're going to start introducing this color down here like this. Okay. While it's still wet. Okay. And we're just going to go back and forth a little bit. Just a little bit back and forth, just over it, just a little bit while it's still wet there. Okay. Now you can see that distinct line between the two colors. We got to make sure we blend all that. Okay. So, but for now, we're just getting this blue, beautiful blue color down. That's all our goal is right now, to just get this nice blue color down. Okay, just like that. 
can do the same at the bottom start introducing it again just over here just like this I'm not overthinking it I'm just putting the color down for now I'll worry about it in a minute for now it's just about getting this light blue color down a dark blue dark blue so now you have it all across the bottom like this, the two colors. And uh, hi, Samantha. And you have it all the way around the bottom. And then you have it at the top. Now what I want to do is come in with my light blue. And just I'm going to start this one about here because I want to be careful I don't um, contaminate um, this brush uh, sponge too much with the dark blue at the top. Now that don't look like any good blending going on there at all, but it will get there. And then do the same at the bottom. Just bring it around. Oops. Okay. Now what you want to do is go back in with your darker brush. I'm not going to put any paint on it. And then you want to start slowly blending this in like this. And I'm doing it while it's all still quite relatively wet. Okay. You just want to very gently tap it so it starts blending into that beautiful blue. Did you see how that now you can't really see that line between the two? Remember how it was really stark across? But you see how all of a sudden, see how easy that is? You've just started blending that in to the light blue. And you're tapping this very, very gently. Okay. So I hope you can, oopsie daisy, you can see now how that's becoming more like one cohesive piece. That's all there is to it. You're going to do the same at the bottom. Bring it all and make it into one cohesive piece. And what you're doing is just using the dark one back over the two colors that you have already put down. Okay. And you can just keep going a little bit back and forth. But you see now um, the difference where I haven't done it and where I'm starting to do it. Do you see how that's starting to blend? So you're just going to keep going back and forth and don't be afraid to come up a little bit higher because what you want to do is to make sure that um, it you can't tell where the line of the rice paper is, okay? So see how easy that whole blending um, is. There's nothing hard to it. I hope you guys um, get some benefit out of this. And let me see if I can show you now the bottom of the bottle. But do you see how that's now all starting to blend in? Where you can't really tell where it kind of starts and ends now. Oh, can you see it? Okay, so now what you're going to do is come in with your blue brush and you're going to start blending this part into your little white part here. So I'm not putting, introducing any more paint, right? I'm just working with what's on the bottle and bringing it down to give it that blended look, okay? Just working with what's already on the bottle. So I go back into the bottle here and pick a little bit up and I just bring it back down, okay? So now you've got a nice blended look coming from this part, slowly starting to work its way down into this part. Okay. 
Okay, so that's what this one is starting to look like now. So it's slowly starting to blend. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so it's slowly starting to blend in, as you can see, right? And you're going to keep at this. And you're going to bring in the lighter color here and there, just like this, because we know we have a snowy effect going on in here. But you see now how we're going to just start introducing this lighter color, bring it across the trees like this. And I'm not using the white, I'm using the light blue. And you just start bringing it down the trees and just put it down in the areas where you see there's a little bit of snow in the rice paper, okay? And then go back in and let's work on blending this bottle even more so that you can't really tell where the beginning and the end is. So you'll notice I don't keep a dead straight line. I'm up and down with this quite a bit. And don't be afraid. So now you're starting to see where it's starting to become one cohesive piece. It's like magic. It is like magic, isn't it? But you can't really tell where it's beginning and where it's ending. So here I want to bring in a little bit of the blue going down in the light blue starting to go down into my darker blue to give it that snowy effect at the bottom. So we'll just continue doing this. So there's no right or wrong way to this. Um, it's just, a, like I said, you're doing quite a bit of um, back and forth as it dries a little, is a little bit tacky. You're just going back and forth. So I'm going to bring introduce some of that color up here um, because what this then makes it look like is that it is all one piece. So now you can see here, um, you can't really see where the paper started and where the paper ended. And you continue doing that, but this all looks like one piece now. Okay, so that the bottom is pretty much done in my mind. Um, I've got it kind of looking like uh, one piece. Yeah, just practice. Um, this is great. So I'm going to what I'm going to do, I am also going to just let this dry a little bit and then introduce some white into it. I'm going to go back here where it's now starting to dry quite a bit and do a little bit more blending. And then I just want to carry it up a little bit up there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a little bit of the dark indigo blue, just very, very little. And I'm just going to play around with it in this area because the sky is quite dark down in this area. So I just want to play with it a little bit here so that we can get that blending going there. Just be careful you don't come in with too much or too little. Well, too little is okay. Um, but like I said earlier, um, at the end of the day, it's not really going to matter because you can come in with the other colors and um, it will give it full coverage. I'm trying to concentrate here, people. I can't even think of what I'm trying to say. So I'm working with quite a dry brush here, okay? But you see how that is now blending nicely into everything? And don't, like I said, be afraid to bring it down a little bit into the actual rice paper so that you have that um, blend over to the rice paper so that you can't really tell. And with the sponge, it makes it easier to kind of um, do that. With a brush, I don't, I haven't been able to get the same effect. Um, but you never know. So now it's starting to look a little bit more um, blended in the little time that I have. I could obviously take a lot more time to do this. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to come in now with a little bit of white. And I just want to um, introduce it a little bit 
just around here um, just to give it a little bit more contrast to blend in um, with the rice paper and I'm using a new brush, a uh, new sponge on this one. Well, not new, it's a wash sponge, but new in the terms of it's not being contaminated with any paint. And now you're starting to see where it's really, truly blending with the um, rice paper. So come in, don't be afraid, and just keep tapping away until you get the look that you want to get, okay? This is all about your bottle and how you want your bottle to look. And like I said, you might go in back and forth a few times with your bottle, come in with a different color if it, and just keep going back and forth. But I think you guys get the gist of how to blend this and make it look okay i'm going to wait till this dries a little bit and then i am going to come back in with some more white to further um contour this in and make it more blended okay i'm just going to give this a quick dry but know that you can i can continue working on this bottle i'm happy with my bottom i'm very very happy with that i'm not worried about that my top, I need a little bit of work on, but I have to wait till this dries. I'm gonna give this a blast. Um, like I said, I can continue to keep blending this, but I don't want to keep you guys too long. But what I will do is just do a few more touch ups and then we'll move on um, to the next step. So for me, I need a little bit more of this beautiful bright blue. So I'm just going to bring that in and I'm just going to blend that in right here, just like this. OK, I just needed to get some of this blue in. in my mind. I needed a little bit of this blue. And it needs a lot more of the light blue back and forth. Don't be afraid to play. And just gently pounce it, okay? This bottle is quite snowy anyway, so it will work either way. Okay, so I'm getting more happier now with this here at the top. I'm just going to touch this up a little bit here. Then we're going to move on to the next step because like I said, I can't keep you guys here all day. Now, the next step is simple. You are just going to take some um, white acrylic paint. And let's see if I can find a little spot here. That's what going to be white. And just... Take a little bit of white paint into it and we're going to do some splatters. Now the splatters really also help kind of ease the blending if it's quite isn't as blended as you like it. So, oops, I'm going to try and not get this everywhere, but you're just going to basically start coming in and you're just going to give it some nice little white snow effects.
And there you have it. So now you're getting there. Obviously, it could do with a little bit more blending, but you are definitely getting there. And you got these gorgeous snow splatters on that dark um, area. Okay, let me clean my hand here. Now, um, again, at home, take your time in doing this blending. Um, it can take a while. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch up. Uh, I've kept you guys here, what, one hour already? Um, I'm going to pull out my contour liners. And I'm just going to do a little bit of um, colouring here. So what I did was I took the gold contour liner. And for me, even though this is black right here, I thank you so much, Maxine. I decided to give it a window so it looked like that the light was on. Well, it had a window, but I did the gold to make it look like it had a light on it. And I love the contour liners because they really allow you to give so much detail but the detail is actually 3D. You probably can't tell, but it is quite 3D. So it really looks like there's lights now there. Yes, you can use this technique on square bottles too. So that is all I actually did for the gold. I'm going to have to be very careful here because um, I'm working with a wet bottle, but I will do my best um, <laughs> to not smudge everything. Now, this is a silver one here. And what I did with the silver one, I'd just like to take out a little bit. What I did with the silver one was I came in and I just did some of my trees and enhanced them a little bit. Just, just little bits here and there, just to give it more of a silvery look along the lines where it was already silver. Can you see those silver lines? Might be hard to see with the light. And I just continued doing that. Uh, make sure this is dry. Where I'm touching it, where it's not dry, it's not helping. And there's a tree down here, so you can go down the tree line like this and just bring out the tree even more. This is hard to do it holding the bottle with one hand. Another one down there. So you can do however you like what I'm doing there. Oh, who was that? Save a gold and silver for me. Yes, I will, men. Yes, I know the light, the windows on that are just fantastic. So you can just keep going around and, you know, I could keep going and adding detail to the trees and doing whatever I wanted here, but I will uh, let it be um, as it is. But this, the silver really then lends itself to the gold foil that is already there. So let's put this bottle here. And then really, um, the next step that we want to do is everybody knows the 3D pens. They... Um, well, for those that don't know, these pens self-level, so it doesn't matter where you put them, they will actually go into a dome. So before I actually do that, let me do something else here. I'm just going to bring out my snow crystal pen and I'm just going to add a little bit of snow to give the 3D effect down here, just to show you, okay? So you get this really 3D effect with the snow pen. And I won't do it on all of it because my bottle gets too wet, I won't be able to handle it. But I will show you the um, dome for the eye. So if you just come straight down and you put it down, You'll notice this will actually self-level into this three. Do you see that 3D eye popping out? <laughs> that will self-level into a beautiful um, round eye. You can still see the eye. See that eye on the corner right there? So 
3D pens are great. They come in so many different colors. And then the final touch, look, I'm just gonna steal the bow from the other bottle. You can, oi, 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 it went in the uh, eye. It went in the eye of the birdie. You can come in with a bow. And then I always have little flowers and things hanging around. It doesn't matter what color you use. You can use any color. Um, let's just stick this in there for now, shall we? Because it's just hanging around. And let me show you what it looks like. I might go in and do a little bit more blending. Um, but to be honest with you, um, I'm actually quite happy with it. Um, I've got to be careful where I touch it. So let me show you the bottle finished. Probably the slowest I've done anything in my whole life. You can see that um, contour silver liner on those trees. See how that's highlighting it there. And look at that gorgeous gold contour liner there. Thank you, Lynette. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm quite pleased with how this has all turned out in an hour. Very good. So there you have it. There is a bottle. I really hope that you enjoyed this Facebook Live. Um, thank you, men. I hope that you, thank you, Dali. I hope that you learned something and um, that you won't be afraid to blend if you are like me. And just play around and have fun. And thank you for joining me. And like I said at the um, beginning, all products are available at Dali Art Market and Pip Art Creations. And again, I just want to thank Tamara for this. Thank you, Tara, Tara, Tamara for this. And thank you um, for everybody for tuning in. And like I said, I'm just going to go back to the beginning and let you guys know that we are in the works to offer these two workshops that actually use the same products. One is the magical um, seahorse. This will be offered through Tamara. And one is the Light Up, where she lights up Steampunk Maiden. So keep an eye out for those two classes. I think I just saw something about the steel blue. I can, let me see, I can show you the color of the steel blue, what that looks like. Um, let me just do it on here for you. I'm not sure what the question was, but... It's like this really nice steel. It literally is a steel blue. You can't really see it. It's a shimmering, sparkling steel blue. So it's going to look kind of like this blue color here. Okay, that's it for me. Um, I will go back. Thank you, Tamara, for having me. I will go back. Um, sparkling steel is the name of the blue color. Yes, spar sparkling steel, men. I will go back and look at the comments in case I missed anybody. I can't thank you guys all enough for joining me and Tamara giving me this opportunity. Um, just so everybody knows, Dali at Dali Art Market is doing a Black Friday sale, 25% off. I am at Pip Art Creations. It starts on Friday. Um, 75% of digital um, work and also excluding obviously Elizabeth Crafts in the new stamp period. But everybody have a wonderful morning, a wonderful evening. I can't wait to be back with the, let me get this horrible thing out of there, bring back my gorgeous bottles. Um, I can't wait to join everybody when I do hopefully the steampunk projects. Thank you, Mim. And here are all three bottles all lined up, albeit they are empty. I'm not happy about that, but I'm happy about how they turned out. Okay, everyone, you're welcome, Liz. Everybody have a great day. I hope you enjoyed. And contact us if you have any questions. You're welcome, Claire.
Yes, you can go get deals on Friday. Goes for here and the UK too. Okay, everybody, have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me again. And I had lots of fun. Okay, bye. Happy crafting.